Mount Sinai, New York, an upper middle class town on the North Shore of Long Island. Inhabited by the working class and city commuters with no shortage of trendy eateries. And then there's the handlebar. Hello, handlebar, how can I help you? Bill Leroy, a former construction worker, and his wife Carolyn bought the handlebar just one year ago. Oh boy, the handlebar was a really nice place. And when I saw it was for sale, I jumped on it. And our specials menu. When we came into the handlebar, we saw that it had been run down. But Billy being so handy. Now they're on. We saw the potential of having a great place. In its heyday, this was the place to be. This was the place that the judges came. This was the place that the lawyers came, the doctors came. Now it's not like that anymore. The nightmare began when 70% of the money was coming from the bar and almost nothing was coming from the dining room. When you can't turn 18 tables on a Friday or a Saturday night, you're in a lot of trouble. <sighs> Bill is an okay manager. Can I bother you to make me a cup of coffee? Billy usually stays at the bar, but being an owner, he has to be more involved. Like, answer the phone. Somebody on the phone? Sometimes he can be very grouchy. Now go put all the stuff back where you got it then. I didn't do that. Like his mood swings change. Well, I've had it with these people. This place is gross. Like dirt, filth that had been built up over the past 20 years. The interior, it looks dated. The decor, <laughs> I think it's great. The core menu I, is basically the same as I inherited with the restaurant. They look disgusting. I don't know why anybody orders them. Melissa is an excellent chef. I'm not a chef. I don't claim to be a chef. I don't want to be a chef. I'm not very creative. Five minutes. The food is crap. I, wish wasn't good. I think hiring me wasn't necessarily the best idea. I don't even know what I'm doing here. I don't intend for it to be my career. I really don't think Melissa has any weaknesses as a cook. The day we call it quits is the day we have not one penny to put into this place. We took out an equity line of credit that's almost maxed out and drained our savings account. God help us. If the handlebar fails, we risk losing our house. Then I'd never want to lose my house. We need to worry about you and me and the handlebar. Bottom line. If Chef Ramsay doesn't come here, our time is very limited. I definitely don't think it's another year. Chef Gordon Ramsay is on a mission to turn the handlebar around. Go west. West, left, west, right. Except he has one small problem. Handlebar. I'm lost. Um, I wonder if you could help me. Okay. I'm right on the fork, but do I go left? Do I go right? Because they both say west. Okay, so you're going to bear to the right. Right. And there's going to be like a big shopping center right after it. Okay, there it is there. Handlebar. There's Gordon Ramsay. How do you know? Because I just talked to him on the phone. Get out of here. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Handlebar. Finally. Now, we're in Mount Sinai, just outside New York. Mount Sinai. Sounds a little bit like cyanide. I hope it doesn't taste like it. I'm a little nervous to meet Chef Ramsay. I'm Carolyn. Carolyn. Hello, Hello Bill. Bill. How are you? How are you? How are you? The man is an expert at what he does. The man is A, a world-renowned chef. B, owns beautiful restaurants because I've seen them on the internet. Whatever you like. Uh, you don't get that way because you're an idiot. Right. Hello. Gordon Ramsay's like really hot. He has like a nice body and stuff. Like for an older man, he's very, very hot. I didn't want to serve him because I just talk and I just don't stop talking. So I was nervous if I said something stupid that I just wouldn't stop and I would just keep talking and talking and talking. This is our dinner menu. Right. We also have our price fix menu. Right. And the early wow. bird specials. Okay, great. We'll have a quick look. Thank you. Yeah. One menu, two menu, three menu, four menu. Right. Definitely quantity. Let's hope it's quality. I need to continue to cook this because I fucked up. Pizza fondue, filet mignon fondue, Swiss cheese fondue. Weird. 
Excellent. You ready yet? I'll go for the soup of the day. Soup of the day? I'll go for the seafood uh, crepe as well. And then I'm going to finish with the filet mignon fondue. Filet mignon? Please. Thank you, Lane. No problem. Excellent. That was nice and busy. Dining room's empty. Look at the place. The decor's ghastly. It's so 80s. Even the fish tank's been here longer than me. Gosh. I think Chef Ramsay came close to ordering the worst things, but, you know, everything that's here is pretty much crap food. Thanks. Yeah? Thank you. No problem. New England clam chowder. Was he saying this soup is good? When Chef Ramsay was sitting there, I was just praying that he was going to be happy with everything. Where's Bill? Let me see if I can find it? him. Thank you. Oh, dear goodness. Patty Gordon would like to see you for a minute. Great. First thoughts that went through my head was, oh, my God. Thanks. Yes. I'd just like to say that that's uh, nicely seasoned, um, very tasty, and perfect for a winter's day. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Nice. And Melissa does a nice job. Grabs it. I'll, I'll check on the rest of your food. Thank you very much. He said your soup was fabulous. Really? Yes, he loved it. I think Melissa's a great cook. I think she's very creative. I think Melissa underestimates herself a lot. But I thought it came out pretty shitty this time. <laughs> There's some well. grapes. There's crab in there. There's lobster and some shrimp in there also. Thank you. No problem. Hi, yeah, yeah. Chef Ramsay seems to have a uh, habit to take his food apart before he eats it. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say. How is everything? Rubbery. Um, the scallops are firm. Uh -oh. The prawns are way overcooked. Oh, God. And the crab meat, it's plastic. It's imitation crab meat. Yeah. If you told me it was imitation crab meat, I wouldn't have ordered it. Oh, God, help me. Well, that was a zest. Seafood crepe. Yeah. That's seafood crap. This is the worst of it, I'm sure. I'm waiting on my beef fondue, filet mignon fondue, which is raw. So why am I waiting so long? There's the steak, and this is the oil. Thank you. No problem. Nothing like waiting to cook your own meat, is there? All right, put that in. Time for a little prayer. <laughs> Ah, uh, comes out looking like dog food. He spits it out, I'm leaving. That was rancid, pointless, tasteless, a complete, utter joke. I want to cry. Why would you deep fry a filet mignon? One of the country's best steaks, deep fried. Are they stupid? Oh, no. I wanted him to be happy with us, but I kind of knew deep down inside that there has to be something wrong with the restaurant. Otherwise, he wouldn't be here. Oh, my God, what a disaster. <laughs> disaster. Hey, it's, it's, that it is not. Stop. it's a disaster. No, it's not. After an underwhelming first meal, Okay, pull together. Gordon realizes that the owners and the chef are oblivious to the restaurant's real problems. What's wrong with the business? It's this room, as you see it, and we can't fill 18 tables on a Friday night. That's the problem. No, the problem here is the food. The food's bad, Bill. I never really had complaints about the food, so that was never really an area of concern to me. When the fondue arrived, I mean, that's just a joke. I don't enjoy the fondue either. But you're the chef, aren't you? You're the one that's, you know, you're, you're running it as the head chef, right? That, that's the intent. So, change it. I don't know what to do about it. Have you lost your passion? I never had a passion to begin with. I, I don't want to be a chef. I was really shocked that that's the way she felt. So you're not a chef? No. I had applications for the job here as a chef. When she approached me and said, would you give me the opportunity? I mean, you don't ask for that opportunity if you don't care what you're doing. Why did you take the job, Melissa, if you're not a chef? The other guy was going out that was here. OK. Um, 
I didn't think our situation was as bad as I'm finding out minute by minute. Having exposed Melissa's apathy in the kitchen, I don't need this. I'm out of my lines. Gordon observes a dinner service to find out how her attitude is affecting the food. I know he's here to help, but it's still very nerve-wracking having someone of his stature standing there staring at you. What are they there? The mushrooms. Is that how that goes out like that? Yes. Holy crap. Stuff mushrooms. Oh, those mushrooms look sadder than the customer. Gordon said they're very sad mushrooms. Why? <laughs> when, just now? Actually, that's a recipe of my own. I made it myself. I was very disappointed that it wasn't presented to him the right way. People eat them, shit. For you? What's my choice? Potato, rice, vegetables? Big potato, mashed potato, french fries, rice, little veggie. We used half instant, half with fresh potatoes. Why do they mix the powdered mashed potatoes with fresh mashed potatoes? That's a way of reusing the baked potatoes. So you don't even actually make fresh mashed potatoes? No. No. Do you want mashed potato, baked potato, french fries, rice, or vegetables? French fries. Don't burn them, please. OK. That's burnt. A little more done than usual, but other than that, yeah. Just an hour into dinner service, and the restaurant has run out of basic vegetables. We ran out of broccoli cauliflower. Yeah. And replaced them with an unusual substitute. Radishes. Radishes? Ooh, yes. Wow, I've never heard of that before. How are you, radishes? Honestly, Gordon? Of course. Not something I was, you know, expect with my steak. Gordon. You want some veg, right? Yeah, you know. Is there anything to keep him happy? Have we checked with Melissa? I, I want to eat the radishes either. So customers are complaining about no vegetables. Any broccoli, vegetable, carrots, or cabbage? Veg. Ah, yeah, veg. Oh, stop. Oh, They're stalks. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a frozen bag. That's why it's crap. Even though Melissa is managing to keep up with the orders, the customers are still not satisfied. No, I don't like it at all. This is unusual. It's not real crap. And Gordon needs Billy to finally understand that the food is Handlebar's biggest problem. Billy, customers are complaining about the food. You can't walk around oblivious to the fact that you think this is good. Yeah, but it's not bad in everybody's opinion. You can't take care of everybody's taste buds. Something that some people like, other people aren't going to like that at all. No one's got any control. And basics here that have just gone completely fucking wrong. If you accept it, everybody else has accepted it. And truthfully, you've accepted it. No, oh, absolutely not. I was kind of really disappointed. I, I knew we needed help. I didn't think we were that bad. I was quite skeptical about his intentions. Whatever. Really starting to dislike him. After witnessing last night's pathetic dinner service, Gordon comes in early for a kitchen inspection. What a mess. Nothing labelled, portions taken out. That's dreadful. Broccoli. Last night we ran out of vegetables. God, the chef can't be bothered to cook fresh broccoli. The reminiscence of Exxon Valdez. Oh, my God. When was the last time the back of the fridge was clean? And you look at it. What is that in there? Oh, my God almighty. That there was a clam. Oh. What a mess. The state of the fridge... Melissa, you got two minutes? ...has only confirmed Gordon's belief that the restaurant lacks true passion and leadership. So, you're in charge of the kitchen and the general hygiene, yeah? Supposed to be, yes. <laughs> Why is it in a mess? Uh, it's 100 times cleaner than it was six months ago. Sure it was. OK. When was the last time you had a little wipe down there or...? Uh... In here? Just, just even... That I've never done. My God. Unbelievable. Oh, this is embarrassing. That oh. she usually does clean that. Right, OK. Um, I'm glad you're starting to make excuses for it. Yep. If you thought this was bad, have a look at this. Chef Ramsay seemed to feel that I was making excuses for everything and really had no idea of the past practices that had gone on here. OK. 
Last night we served frozen vegetables to a customer and we got two boxes of broccoli there. You know, I can do it all. That's it. You were happy to serve frozen broccoli over fresh broccoli. I'm trying to open up your eyes, Billy, and explain to you, you know, what the current situation is. When was the last time this fridge was cleaned? A week ago. Oh, come on. This hasn't been cleaned in years. No, 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 it hasn't. I'm sorry, 21 years in the business, I'll bet every fucking dollar I have, this fucking place hasn't been cleaned in years. I'm disgusted. Put your hand down there. You still never did bend down and touch it. It was a big thing of denial for him. I'll take responsibility for the fact that I haven't changed it, but it's not all my fault, you know? Everything's coming out, and this place is going to get cleaned. I wish you'd give me a little more credit for cleaning it up as much as I have so far. It looks 60, 70 percent times better than it used to look in here. Billy, that's disgusting. Fine. No, it's, it's, it's not fine. We've got a big problem. When was the last time that fridge was steam cleaned? I had the kid in there doing it last week. Did you check what he'd done? No, obviously not. So why can't you act like a man and do something about it? Yep. My God. I just don't even know what to say anymore. He just keeps tearing apart everything that wasn't done and not giving me credit or a uh, pat on the back for things that were done. Unfucking believable So that just proves and confirms how weak this guy is. He's not running this place. This place is running him and is in need of a fucking serious clean. That is appalling. Prompted by Gordon's shocking discovery, Melissa enlists the wait staff to do a thorough cleaning. What do you use to clean that? Bleach and soap. It's disgusting. I really wish I had a mask on me right now. Billy. Just two seconds in. I was hoping he was going to tell me, I understand, Billy, that this isn't your fault, but it really needs to be taken care of, so let's take care of it. I'm fucking pissed off. And I'm upset on the kind of shit that I've just discovered in there. Time to drag me through the mud some more. It is what it is. You don't seem one fucking ounce bothered about it, Billy. You can't just stick your head back in the sand and ignore it, Billy. Sure you can. What do you want me to do, flip out and yell and scream like you do? That's not my way. The responsibility is yours, Billy. I guess you want something done right, I guess you have to do it yourself. But well, maybe I'll just get rid of everybody in the restaurant and I'll do it all myself. Great idea. And then when it doesn't work out, and then when I drop dead because I fucking sleep two hours a day, then maybe it'll get done. Or maybe, who cares, once you're dead, it doesn't make a difference anyway. Oh, come on. Now I feel you're copping out of me now. Well, because now I'm just getting dragged through the mud. And... You're a weak man, Billy. I really I'm just glad you had enough. I was not going to be ridiculed just for the sake of needing his help. Finished. Can you at least talk to me? Nope. Billy, can you talk to me, please? Nope. I have nothing to say. Billy. I wouldn't talk to my dog the way you talk to me. Go fuck yourself. That's right. The hell with everything. I'll make it work myself without his help. Everything in my life that I've ever set out to do, I did on my own. Finished. You know, right? I'm done. What a week, man. Billy! Unable to accept Gordon's criticism... Billy! Billy decides he's had enough. Fuck him. Fuck him, fuck them. The fridge is disgusting. I've asked for it to be cleaned. He's telling me I'm dragging him through the mud. And he fucking walks out. He's mad right now and he's being stubborn. He doesn't we want you to leave. He wants your help. We he's just not... Right now, he's too ashamed to admit it. I just want him to act responsible. While Gordon tries to make sense of Billy's actions... He doesn't have to act like a baby. Billy rehearses a speech to Gordon. I am so done. Don't act me on. I have nothing to say to you. Not a word. There was nothing in my head that made me want to think and reconsider about doing this. Can you go out there and just, you know, have a word with them? You guys are the backbone of this place. You can't just throw the towel in. I knew Billy would get mad. Done. Just fucking done with all this bullshit. But honestly, you don't face the truth, you can't do anything about it. We've been busting our ass trying to help you out. You're giving up on yourself, this place, and all of and us. us. I wouldn't talk to my dog the way that jackass talks to me. I'm done. He's telling you the truth, though, Billy. Great. There's ways to go about it. 46 years old, never been talked to like that by anybody. And you know what? 
The only thing that's keeping me from fucking hitting him with a fucking baseball bat is that I'd go to fucking jail for it. I'm done. 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 Finished. And you're not the man everyone here thought you were, Billy. Absolutely you're, not. You're gonna give up and you're gonna give up on all of us? Yeah. Fine, be a fucking baby, Billy. Fuck it, I'm done. Yeah, you know what? Put the place up for fucking sale. I can go back to construction and enjoy my fucking life the way I used to before I, all of this bullshit. We'll go to bankruptcy court and just give it all up. Fuck it, I'm done. Bye. So help me God, I will not open the door tomorrow. You can all go fuck yourselves, and I don't care if it's all for nothing. Do not care. Billy! You know what? I'll survive somehow. Billy. Fuck you. Unbelievable. Having just missed her chance to defuse the situation, Carolyn now faces the prospect of running the handlebar alone. Very upset. I have a husband that's ready to throw in the towel. So here I am, stuck holding the bag. Let me help you. I want you to help me, but I don't know what to do. I have a job okay. that I have to work so I can pay my mortgage. Sure, okay. I don't know what to do. Why can't we work at turning this around? I would love to work at turn this around. OK. Let me open the restaurant tonight. OK. OK. I'm feeling that I'm going to do what I have to do to make everything work. Because I'm not walking out now, and I'm not flushing the last 17 years of my life down the bowl. To further inspire Carolyn to move forward with the plan, Gordon shows her the dedication of her staff. What a difference. It's looking great. It looks so much huh? better. You've done a great job. We were clean the walk in. We were more or less just doing it to just show that, like, we are dedicated and we do want this to work. Billy's gone. Whether he comes back later or not, it's not going to affect what we're doing tonight. We're opening, and we're opening with a clean fridge, healthy attitude. We're hungry to get this place full. Yes? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Her courage now bolstered by her staff's support Carolyn leaves Billy a message. Billy, I'm not going to stop now. I will do whatever it takes to make my restaurant succeed with Chef Ramsey's help. I'll succeed. I just told him my determination that I'm going forward with this, regardless of if he wanted to or not. The restaurant is about to open for dinner. But to get the handlebar moving in the right direction, Gordon makes some quick additions to the menu. Melissa, let's do a special tonight. Some fried clams with a homemade tartar sauce. It's which clams? Chef Ramsay, he's one of the best chefs in the world, you know, standing right next to me and was uh, very surreal. Generously season them with the flour straight in, into the fire, and then again, a nice little season there. OK. Yeah. The minute the customer arrives at the table, they sit down, and we need to give them fresh, hand-cut, homemade potato chips. A warm welcome. Mm. No, those are good. This place is more laid back, so I think the chips are a good idea. It's different. Nice. Hi, good evening. Do you have a reservation? I thought it was great that Chef Ramsay could show us how to make such a simple thing like potato chips that everybody would love. We do have a special appetizer today. Deep fried clams with a homemade tartar sauce. All right, we'll, we'll do, do that. that. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, potato chips are going down well, special's going well. Keep it going, yeah? Nice atmosphere in the dining room, really good. Clams. There we are, clams. They love the clams. They said that's the best thing that they've ever had here, so it's going really good. We're not serving dirty bowls to the table. Let's go, Melv, yeah? I didn't think he was going to come back. I was really, really surprised that he came back so quickly. I am angry about things that transpired earlier in the day, still. Hours after threatening to sell the business, owner Billy returns to the handlebar just in time for dinner service. There was absolutely no part of me that still wanted Chef Ramsey to be here. I wanted him to be gone. Billy, come on, let go of it. When Billy came back, he had his bad attitude of, yeah, whatever. Billy, please, 
I love you. That's why I'm here. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. I can honestly say that I love my wife more than anything in this world, so I came back here for my wife. While Billy tries to reconnect with his restaurant, I need my food. Melissa struggles to give the wait staff complete orders. I ran half the fucking order. I need the rest of it. And there's a lot of problems. Who's this for here, Melissa? It's been here 37 minutes. I don't know. The crepes, I forgot half of it, so. Melissa just stopped communicating. I mean, that's just how Melissa is. And I think that's when we ran into problems. Are any of my foods coming up or any of my tables? I have no idea. Oh, sounds sick. I'm so friggin' long. We've been waiting Communication two hours. is the one thing, and it's not happening right now. Oh, boy. And I was, you know, in the weeds so much, I really couldn't tell who was waiting and who was wanting. I need salmon Pontieri. Was the salmon on that? I think Melissa got very flustered back there. This place was total chaos. It's 9 o'clock. I've been here since what time? 5.30. I just don't know what to say. With the orders backed up in the kitchen. Killing me. Killing me. Whatever. God help us. Impatient, hungry customers begin taking out their frustrations on each other. You know what you're talking about before you open up your mouth. I don't can open up my mouth any time. You can do it with Can you please stop talking to my parents this way? That's ridiculous. It's a total disaster. And I uh, really think I'm to the point now that I don't know what else to do. Come on, Billy. Can we talk about it? Billy has no choice but to listen to Chef Ramsay because if he won't listen, then we might as well just shut the doors and walk away right now. I have never, ever, ever seen my kitchen fall apart like that. Ever. Ever. On our busiest nights. Never have I seen that. Ever. Melissa has to talk now. This is the most crucial stage of the service where she has to open up and, and talk. And get help from the and other get table. Help. It's just delegate with so many tables on. The man is one of the top chefs in the world. And um, maybe I should um, put aside the ill feelings and listen to what he has to say. Melissa may not be communicating, but the menu is vaster. Yeah. I see what you're saying. At that point, I was very open-minded to his ideas. Seriously, I'm pleased you're back, yeah? I, you're, the, you're the foundation of this place. We have a little chat with the staff, because I think they would like to hear that we're all on the same track. The first hour of service was amazing. And then we got backed up. We got backed up bad. Melissa, you refused to communicate. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah, I agree with you. Honestly, this menu has to come down, yes? That has to be condensed. It'd be appreciated. New, small, dynamic menu. A menu that we can push out. It'd be real nice to get a new menu that'll be more concise and in order. It'll be good. <laughs> Relaunch tomorrow night. We have to make it a success. Get some sleep, yes? In preparation for the relaunch, Gordon's team worked through the night updating Handlebar's tired, dated look. Ready? Ready. Let's have a look at the new Handlebar. Let's go. Oh, no. Here we go. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, this is awesome. oh, oh, oh my it. god, it's gorgeous. This place looks awesome. Wow. It's fresh. It's new, Billy. It's warm. There's nothing that's antiquated. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. Oh, that is awesome. Feeling wow. Wow is all I can say. Wow. 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 <laughs> yeah. Wow. What about the lamps? Huh? Oh, no more gloves. No more gloves. No more gloves. We are no longer stuck in the eighties. Look at it. Warm, bright, vibrant, happy. Yes, Good. thank yeah. you. <laughs> huh? Thank you. Everything is awesome. It's incredible. I'm totally blown away. <laughs> Billy, you have Long Island's first ever gastropub. Gastropub? What the fuck is a gastropub? What's a gastropub? Good question, Thanks. gastropub. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. I've never heard of a gastropub, babe. We're the first on Long Island. That is so incredibly awesome. A gastropub is warm, open all hours, come and relax and enjoy with no intimidation. We cater for everybody. It's perfect for the neighborhood. There are 25 gastropubs in Manhattan, and they are doing a phenomenal amount of business. 
a pub with an emphasis on fine food at reasonable prices, that kind of hit home. It was exactly the type of place that my wife and myself were looking to turn it into. Knowing Billy and Carolyn's love for motorcycle riding. Let's go. Ready to make some noise, yes? Gordon has organized Handlebar's first annual motorcycle rally to help spread the word about the relaunch. Ecstatic? Ecstatic. Yes. But what Billy and Carolyn don't know is Gordon has reached out to another bike enthusiast. And rock and roll legend. Twisted Sisters' very own <laughs> Dee Snyder. Hey! Well, I'm good. good to good see you, Al. Thank you so much for coming. Carol? Hi, how are you, Carol? I'm Bill D. Hey, Twisted Sisters. <laughs> I never would have imagined here I would get on my bike and ride with Chef Ramsay and Dee Snyder. I was like, oh my God, how cool is that? Billy, are you ready? Yes, we are. It was phenomenal that Gordon Ramsay got him to come here and help us kick off the new start of the restaurant. It was nice to get out there and ride. It was nice to see that Chef Ramsey could ride a motorcycle and enjoy himself. It was a lot of fun. All right, let's go. Get these out. The grand reopening of Handlebar tonight. Come down to the Handlebar's reopening tonight. Grand reopening, come on down. Come on down. I'm smiling because I feel that the Handlebar is pointed in the right direction now. We have some place to go and some place to look forward to. Now that the word had spread, Gordon gets back to the crucial task of introducing the new gastropub menu. That's the menu in front of it. Look at it. There is nothing complicated on there. Whether it's the steak, mussels, the salmon, the sausage, everything is so simply done. The new menu, I think, is uh, phenomenal. He consolidated it down to a lot of the comfort food type favorites just served in a different light. Melissa, this is the night that we make the statement. And when we start getting in the weeds, you have to come out yourself and open up. Yes, sir. Chef Ramsay put his effort into this to change us, so I'm going to try not to let him down. We're going to start confirming the first ever gastropub in Long Island. After the bomb last night, I'm sweating. I'm nervous to see how my kitchen pulls it together. Make it work. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. It's the grand reopening of the Handlebar. Nice to see you, my darling. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh. And Chef Ramsay's motorcycle rally has clearly spread the word about the relaunch. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. Hey. Let's go, let's go, let's go. With Billy appearing to embrace Chef Ramsay's changes. Everything's homemade. Everything. All eyes are now on Melissa to step it up in the kitchen. All right, stay focused. Here we go. Everybody's excited to come in and see how it looks now and see what's going on with the menu and everything else. Can I have the portobello mushroom melt? Grilled chicken sandwich. Salmon good? You all will be pleased with the food tonight. Thank you. Melissa, I need the shrimp cocktail and then the salads and then the entrees. All right. Melissa. Melissa, listen to me. I want this communication ramped up tonight. You need to connect. The minute you stop talking, we're fucked. Okay. I think Melissa needs to be more assertive and keep everybody under control. Let's go. Too quiet for me. As the restaurant fills up... Thank you. ...and customers embrace the new gastropub menu... Yeah, right. Perfect. This is good. ...Gordon takes a moment to make a special announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a local legend, Twisty Sisters, yes, Dee Snyder. He came in through the door on that bike. It was just amazing. Everybody was clapping and cheering and having a great time. How cool is this, huh? All right, here's the deal. In honor of the grand reopening of Handlebar Restaurant, we're going to be auctioning this bike off. So if you want to bid on this beautiful Holly Davidson Sportster, you can go to Handlebar Restaurant website and put a bid in there, and all the proceeds will go to the March of Dimes. Ladies and gentlemen, Dee Snyder. With Dee Snyder's family and friends now seated. I'm going for the portobello mushroom melt. In the first fully packed house in over a year. It's all about steak. Fish and chips. Cow salad. 
House salmon? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. The kitchen is about to be tested. The salmon looks black underneath, Melissa. I don't think it's burnt, honestly. Pass through the spatula. I think it's okay. No way, madam. Yeah? I got you. But I'm not serving charcoal shit like that. No. Fucking disgusting. Melissa thought she could just take care of everything herself, and she had two other cooks and didn't ask for their help. This is a recook. I'm very sorry, Beth. I hope it is better. Me too, Missy. I'm so sorry. In her rush to fill orders, freaking salmon. Melissa starts sacrificing the quality of the food. This isn't cooked. Oh. Look at the middle of that fucking salmon. Gross. That salmon looked like what you'd find in a seafood section. Like, it was shiny and it looked cold. Like, are you fucking kidding me? The salmon we sent came back fucking raw, so we're doing it again for the third time. Freaking salmon. Let's do this. I think Melissa got very flustered back there. Falling apart. Why are we falling apart? Do we have any other salmon elsewhere? She is. Where is my salmon? Where in the freaking salmon? Silly, if it's burnt or it's raw again, I'm gonna shove it down somebody's throat. Everything just kept compounding and compounding to the point where it was a total disaster. You gotta be kidding me. I'm gonna hang myself. I'd burnt the shit out of this. After first overcooking, no fucking way. Then undercooking the salmon. Raw. Melissa hopes the third time is the charm. Huh. But she's got to open up and fucking communicate. If she doesn't start communicating now, we're fucked, yeah? Yep. Please, yeah? She needs to utilize the other two cooks that she has in the kitchen. It's not a one-man show, and it can never work if she thinks it can be. Honey, let's just get it right this time. Okay. Melissa, use these two guys. I'm trying. I want to hear it. Open up, communicate, yeah? Uh, you know what? You want to cook that? I know. I got, I got it. Please. Thank you. I will take care of the veg. Good girl. I didn't realize I can't take care of the line on my own. Salt and pepper, please. Yeah, I Thank got you. Pepper. I didn't really need to open up and communicate and get things going. Your salmon is coming, honey. I'm very sorry. Lovely. Good to go. Thank you very much, honey. Gordon's persistence with Melissa appears to finally be paying off. <laughs> you give it a thumbs up? That's good. Yeah, all right. <laughs> We gotta get this together. I need three or fries. Three fries. Right now, at the moment, I understand Chef Ramsay's whole concept is to communicate and keep everything in order. We gotta get it going. As long as I can communicate with the guys next to me, it will get it working properly. I need to concentrate on Dee's table, yes? We are doing it now. Okay. Take the two burgers whenever you can. Melissa really shocked me tonight where she was able to ask Eric and George, oh, can you do this? Can you get this? We are doing real well. Let's keep it up. Very, very good. This is good. This is amazing. Lovely. Let's go. Tonight, we had a couple of really large screw-ups, but in the end, it all worked out. A great menu, right? Everybody was happy. I feel very excited. I feel good. That's it. In the next couple of days, the word continued to spread throughout Long Island about its first gastropub. We have a Wonza Full Moon menu. That was the best burger I've ever eaten. I thought it was cooked really well. Reinvigorated by the new direction and updated menu, Melissa has found her passion again. One small Caesar, one small how. Chef Ramsay being here has definitely brought new life into my job. Chicken sandwiches up and out, burgers up and out. I do have more passion about it. I want to make sure everything is good. I'm surprised at myself now. Even the wait staff has taken it upon themselves to maintain the cleanliness of the restaurant. We're going to make a list of what needs to be cleaned every night because we want to keep it clean and we want to make it look like presentable. And Billy, with renewed hope and determination, is moving forward. Something to enjoy while they're waiting to take your order. Inspiring everyone to make the handlebar a success. Well done. This place is going to be a success, I tell you. Great location, great food, great gastropub. My wife and myself are very appreciative of what he did. Seemed like there was a black cloud hanging over the handlebar. Um, I think the sun's starting to shine a little bit. Congratulations on being Long Island's first gastropub. Okay, good night. Chef Ramsay came to my restaurant 
went above and beyond anything I could have possibly asked for. And I know this restaurant's gonna be successful from here on out. That was tough. Very tough indeed. We made a lot of changes. Changed the menu, changed the decor. But there's one thing in there that I thought was completely unchangeable. And that was Bill. And we even managed that.